happy, happy Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem, and uh, I send y'all my salams. But, <laughs> y'all got to forgive me too, like I'm looking kind of crazy. I had a long night last night. Um, it's been a beautiful Ramadan. It's been beautiful. But um, it's been a struggle at the same time. Because I've been I've been working out. Yeah, I've been working out um during the entire Ramadan. Um yesterday and the day before was my first two days working out after I broke my fast, like in the nighttime. But other than that, we in like the I think what like the seventeenth, eighteenth day uh today. And um I haven't even like out of all the 17 or 18 days, we and I don't know, I don't really keep track. You know, I've been working out while actually doing fasting hours. So, you know, the body getting adjusted. And um, you know, it's it's a uh it's a struggle. It's a struggle, but it was prescribed for me, you dig, uh, as those before me to combat, you know, a lot of these illnesses and ailments, um, both physically emotionally and especially spiritually and mentally um but with that being said you know it's been so much going on like this ramadan i feel like i feel like the creator you know i feel like god allah he's just showing me so much and just opening up so much to me and i wanted to um jump on jump on youtube real quick and let y'all know you know what i'm saying what's going on with me plus you know praise god allahu akbar I'm in a new crib. I didn't, uh, I'm really ready for MTV Cribs or BET Cribs if they bring it back. Um, I got some furniture getting ready to be put together. It was just delivered like yesterday. I got a new dining room table. That's that's the old dining room table. I'm gonna get rid of that. It's the new one right here, much more contemporary. And um, let me show y'all. Fully set up, but fly now. It's 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 hella fly right now. You know, it's the garage. You see, I still got some stuff out there. I need to get up. Um, Downstairs. I needed, I'm in Atlanta now, for those who don't know, and, um, you know, I needed a way to, you know, park my money, some safe, some safe. And uh, this house, this house definitely, definitely, definitely did the trick. I may put it back on the market, maybe next year, maybe six months from now, you know, depending on how the market's going. But, uh, but yeah, this was a, this was a dope. Dope, dope house. Y'all got to see the outside real quick. You know, I normally don't do this because I don't want to make people envious of me. But just trying to show, you know, what's really going on. Yeah, I don't want to make people envious. Yard guys coming over sometime today. So there you go. Yeah, it's literally is the biggest house on the block. But yeah, I don't want to make people envious. It's all the flexing. That ain't really what we're doing at all. You got to be careful. Because certain things, you make people, uh, 
you make people envious of what you're doing. And like the old me, I might have did that in the past, but I'm not doing that no more moving forward. Okay. Now, to go ahead and get into the topic about what I was gonna discuss. And this is gonna be a it's gonna be a quick video. This is not gonna be that long. But I came to the realization that the brother Kevin Samuels, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, rest in peace, may Allah forgive him, Rahim Allah, that he was right about a lot of y'all. Yeah. Yeah, I hate to admit it. And I'm for the record, all that red pill shit, right? Excuse my language. But all that red pill bullshit, I think a lot of that shit is gay. You know what I'm saying? I think about 95% of that shit is gay, homosexual-like. You know what I mean? Um, but I will say this. Brother Kevin Samuels, he was right about a lot of y'all women. And what he was really right about, and I, for the record, I've never, when Kevin Samuels was here, I couldn't stand him. Right? I couldn't stand the man. I was not one of his supporters or followers in the least. But being that I'm a man, not with an open mind, but a discerning mind, and the things that's been happening to me during Ramadan just concerning women, yeah, I'm convinced. Yeah, he was right about a lot of y'all. Yeah, he was definitely right. Because, and this is the main thing he was right about, these unrealistic um, expectations that you you women like to have when y'all dealing with men, you know. And for the for the brothers in here, for the men that come in here, make sure you really understand what I'm saying. For the women that come in here, make sure you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, these unrealistic expectations. Okay, a lot of y'all see. I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. See all that King of BBW shit. That's we're gonna put that to the side. Yeah, me liking big girls. Yeah, me liking big bitches. Yeah, we're going to, me liking big backs, whatever you want to call it, however you want to, plus size, however you want to, whatever uh, socially acceptable, you know what I'm saying, lit term that you want to use nowadays, we're going to put that to the side. I could have kept that shit in my private motherfucking life. Yeah, I ain't never have to come out and say none of that shit because Stefan Lorenzo, okay, i.e. Stefan Lorenzo Waldrop, he has a real story, okay? He has a real story, okay? He's a real entertainer. Like, he really, he really, really does this shit. I don't need plus-size women to, you know what I mean, like, try to ride a wave. And I said that to say this. A lot of you big bitches be thinking, oh, just because you a big bitch, yeah, just because you a big bitch, oh, I'm going to fuck with you. Bitch, you do not work like that. Yeah, bitch, it do not work like that. Excuse my language. Yeah, just because you a big bitch don't mean that I'm going, that you're going to be able to be on my team. You know, a lot of y'all think like that. A lot of y'all think like that, which is some bullshit, you know? That ain't saying that I won't, you know, do things with you, that I won't show you respect, that I won't, um, you know, that I won't um, be genuine with you, you know, and even flirt with you, because I'm the type of nigga, I'm a jail nigga. I said it before I say it again, I'm a jail nigga. And with that being said, would any woman try to talk to me, any woman, whether I'm interested or not, like, I think it's very rude not to flirt with her. You know, whether I find a woman attractive or not, I'm still going to flirt. But a lot of you bitches, a lot of you bitches, you know, this internet got y'all shit with the big head. But what you don't know is, bitch, my head is way bigger than yours, bitch. Yeah, especially my dick head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pause. <laughs> but, um... Like, I ain't trying to, like, turn up or nothing like that. I just want to convey these convey these words in the clearest, concisest way I possibly can. And then what's even worse than you bitches thinking, just because you a big bitch, Stefan going to fuck with you, right? You bitches be thinking, what's even worse than that is this. Oh, bitches, because you a big bitch with a little ass, you got a big ass, and your waist kind of small, and you got a pretty face, then I'm going to fuck with you. No, bitch, it do not work like that. Now, it might have worked like that when I was fresh out the feds. Yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah, it might have worked like that. You know, I was giving bitches passes on certain shit. But, bitch, what? What? 
What are you talking about? Even if you want to talk about all that, let's back up. They say material possessions don't mean nothing. That's bullshit. It mean a whole lot. We in America. Yeah, we in America. Material possessions mean a whole motherfucking lot. Bitch, I'm standing in, I'm standing in 800 k right now, right? I'm standing in 800 k right now. Why would I fuck with a bitch that don't even, that ain't got shit? Yeah, why would I fuck with a bro? Why would I fuck with a bro that ain't got shit? And another thing, too, is y'all should know, I like mature women. With What I mean by mature women, I mean older women. I'm not really that much attracted to women under 30. Well, I'm 37 now. I'm not really attracted to women like this under 30. You know, I'm mostly attracted to women, you know, over 40. You know, like that really kind of tends to be my thing. However, you know, for younger bro, you know, about 27, 25 is kind of where I draw the line. You did? And even then, you got to really be something to be there. Like, you know, she got to really, like, have something up here and here, not to mention here. You know what I mean? And it's not like I need a bra to take care of me or nothing like that because I'm going to do my thing regardless. I'm a player. Come hella high water, I'm going to make I'm going I'm going to make it do what it do, baby, right? But y'all be having these unrealistic realistic expectations and fucking with niggas. N bitch, like let me back up. Y'all seen the 20 a lot of y'all probably knew subs from the 20 versus 1. We're going to back up for a second. We're going to talk about the 20 versus 1. It was a lot of women that were supposed to come that didn't even show up to the 20 versus 1. For whatever reason, right? For whatever reason, that might have been. But a lot of women, after that was posted, after Big Mother, shout out to Big Mother's house, after she posted that shit, a lot of women, especially more than a few that were supposed to be there that night, you know, started following me. A couple of them jumped in my DM or whatever. Hey, man, you coming up in here? Man, hit the like button. Get my likes up. You coming up in here, get my likes up. I don't know, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't know what it is y'all have against the like button. Yeah, take your finger, mash on the like button. It's very simple. It's very simple, okay? You coming up in here, that's like coming in somebody's house and not speaking. My grandmama would have slapped the shit out your fuck ass. That's like coming to somebody function, you know, and not bringing nothing. You know, my grandmama would have slapped the shit out your fuck ass. Anyway, let me calm down, man. My, um, my cursing is terrible. Side note, my cursing has always been just terrible. Terrible. I remember <laughs> I remember when I first got to the feds, um, to the USP Coleman, site one. I had a roommate, Muslim brother from Philly named Kadir, big Kadir, but he was a little, he was a little, <laughs> he was a little guy. You know what I'm saying? Not a little guy, but he was, he was a, he was a shorter guy, right? Okay, that's what's up, player. Pink, pink, Y, V, R. Lock it in, in. But yeah, though, so the brother, <laughs> here's a side note. The brother, um, when I got in the room, we, you know what I mean, we got in the cell, we got real cool. You know what I mean? We got real cool, real quick. You know, I, I respected the hell out of that brother. But I always had a problem with cursing, right? And the brother, he was, uh, Kadir, he was serving 155 years. Yeah, he was serving 155 years since. He didn't go down till he was probably like 37, about my age. And he was probably about like 47, 48 when I met him. You know, salam, salam to that brother. Inshallah, may Allah lighten his, lighten his uh his difficulties and make his path easy. I mean, inshallah, give him freedom. I mean. But anyway, I'll be telling him stories. We'd be in the cell. I'll be telling him stories about me on the street or whatever, whatever. You know, he loved to hear me talk about the women. That he loved that. And then um you know, I'd be cursing, and he'd step. Hey, Aki, stuff a lot. Right? You curse too much, I right? Come on, I right? calm down with all that cursing, Aki. Right? And then he would be like, he would proceed to talking and tell me a story about him killing the niggas. Like, every story Kadir ever told me, and he told me a lot of stories. I did my last year at Coleman, my last year in the feds. I did it at Coleman, site one, not site two. USP one, not two. Um... Yeah, nigga, I just shouted you out, player. Pink, YVR. Yeah, we got you. I'm going to make sure I, I pin you. 
I pin you um if you're the only comment when I um after I um after I finish this video. But yeah though, so every story Kadir told me had to do with him killing the nigga. <laughs> like every story, the story, no matter what was in the story, it ended with him murking the nigga. But at the same time, the brother would get mad at me, upset with me, not rather not mad, but upset with me about um about cursing. So that was just something that just brought me back. Anyway, fast forward. But yeah, though, these, these, um, these unrealistic standards that you bros be out here having, you know, that shit not flying over here. You know, I don't speak ambiguous when I'm talking to a woman. I let her know exactly what the fuck it is. You know, when a bitch jump in my DM, you know, acting like she like me, it's a whole thing. I ain't gonna lie, right? Prior to Ramadan, yeah, prior to Ramadan, Bitches wasn't just jumping in my DM like that. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna cap. Not new bitches. There was a lot of old bitches jumping in, bitches that I knew of. You know what I'm saying? That I might have fucked with back in the day. But wasn't no like new bitches just jumping in the DM every other day, multiple times a day, multiple different broads. But since Ramadan, multiple different bitches, multiple different broads, and they all in the A. Most of the time, a bitch jumping my DM shouldn't even be in my whole, my same state or city. But all these bitches in Atlanta and the surrounding areas, all these bitches jumping in the DM, jumping in the DM, you know, telling a nigga, oh, what they want to do to a nigga, what she'll do to me. I think that shit is kind of corny. Like, I don't, I've never jumped in a broad DM and told her what I wanted to do to her sexually. Like, just off the rip. I've never done that. And I think even for, for a woman to do that to a man, I think that bitch, that shit's kind of corny. Bitch, that shit don't impress me. Bitch, you know how many bitches want to suck on me? Bitch, you know how many bitches want to suck on me? Bitch, you know how many bitches want to suck on me? That shit ain't it. That shit don't impress me, girl. Not in the least. Where do y'all get this shit from? I know y'all get that shit from. Y'all get that shit from from all the motherfucking goofies and lames and motherfucking pedophiles and shit. They be jumping in y'all DMs behind, you know what I mean, the sexual shit that y'all be posting. You right? You know, and the niggas y'all be leaving on scene that be having praise and worship service for you in the comment section and all that type of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not one of them. I don't give a fuck about your pussy, bitch. If don't no money come with it, I don't give a fuck about your pussy, bitch. The pimp game is very religious, bitch. <laughs> Even though I'm not a pimp, I'm a player. You know, I'm a player, but certain rules still apply. And I'm not fattening no motherfucking frogs or snakes. Don't nobody get a free ride over here, bitch. Go over there. Because I've seen, I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I've seen who you motherfucking bitches marry. I've seen the type of niggas y'all marry. I've seen the type of niggas y'all have kids by. I've seen the type of niggas y'all be in relationships for years and putting up with all type of shit and just, you know, doing all type of shit for this nigga and all type, taking all type of crazy shit. Bitch, you did all that for that nigga. He not even half the man of me. So what the fuck you think you gonna do fucking with me? Bitch, you think you just gonna throw me some pussy? Let me tell you something, bitch. I got one of the best dick suckers. I'm 37 years old. I done fucked. This is Ramadan. We're gonna tell the truth. Touch somebody in the spirit of sinful to pee. Touch somebody and say, tell the truth. Yeah, touch somebody right now and say, tell the truth. I've been fucked over 250 bitches. Yeah, my body count at least 250. Give or take 30. And who knows, it might be a little bit more than that. Now, keep in mind, I spent at least 10 years of my life incarcerated. Right? Yeah, my number's high like that. And I spent 10 years incarcerated. And I know you you goofies going to come in and say, assume the devil come in your mind, oh, no, 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 no. I've never done no homosexual activity whatsoever. Whatsoever. You know what I mean? Y'all would love that. Side note, y'all would love that. Just like y'all loving the shit Diddy going through right now. Just like y'all laughing at Diddy right now. And not just Diddy, but his whole family. You know, people who didn't have nothing to do with whatever he allegedly did. Right? Right? Y'all would love 
Y'all would love some shit like that to be. I know it. I know it. Cause motherfuckers want you to be happy, but they don't really want you to be happy. Message. But um <laughs> back to the verses. So, man, it was one of the bras from the verses. And I'm not even gonna say no names. Cause I don't I don't embarrass bitches. That ain't what I do. That's some bitch shit. You know what I'm saying? A bitch gotta really do something for me for me to try to embarrass her. So that ain't what I do. But um, if y'all really get at me in the comment section, I bit nigga, I might tell you. But anyway, um, yeah, it was one of the bitches from the 20 versus one. You know, uh, you know, the bitch was giving me some action. You know, the bitch was really giving me some action. And this is the thing about it, like Gorgeous Dre said, it's all about numbers, you know, mathematics. So if you talk to 10 bitches, 10 women, at least one of them should like you. If you talk to 22, should like you. You know what I mean? I think my average was more than that. Uh, considering that, you know, it, it wasn't even 20 women there because all the women didn't show up. Anyway, hey, look, you coming up in here, man, hit that like button. Hit the like button. You coming up in here, hit the fucking like button. I'm not going to keep saying this shit because I'm really one of the coldest niggas on the internet. Especially, you want to talk this BBW shit? All you bitch-ass niggas, yeah, all you bitch-ass, fuck-ass, broke-ass uh, niggas that want to come and try to ride this BBW wave and all that shit, first of all, nigga, you need to be younger than me. Yeah, you, you need to be younger than me. Not that that's going to help you that much, but you definitely need to be younger than me. Two, you got to be flyer than me. Not even that that's going to help you that much, but you got to be flyer than me or as fly as me. Three, and I'm governed by the spirit of flyness. Don't get it fucked up. Three, you got to actually spend some motherfucking money. I'm the only nigga in this shit that done really spent money with this shit. Hundreds of thousands. I'm the only nigga that done done that. All these other niggas, all these other niggas, the only thing they know how to do is, you know what I'm saying, get on, you know, they, they creative than a motherfucker. They get on the internet and, you know, post some videos or post some pictures, some little bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Some shit they ain't even have to spend no money on. And you bitches be googly gaga over it. That's another reason why I'm hard on a bitch. I hold women accountable, man. I believe in that shit. A law gonna hold her accountable. So I ain't gonna hold her accountable. Anyway, so one of the bras, she was acting like she was really giving me some action. You know what I mean? At the, at the 20 versus one. She jumped in my DM and shit, like the next night, wanted me to pull up on her, right? She was out of town. You know, she was staying uh, at a hotel in Atlanta. Wanted me to pull up on her. This is right before Ramadan started, too. Like a day before Ramadan started. And um, I'm like, damn, big booty, fine, bitch. You know, exactly the type of shit I like, far as looks-wise. And I'm like, damn, like, Damn, should I pull up on this bitch or not? Like, I was kind of debating with it because I was kind of already getting myself in the mold for Ramadan. Like, it's the whole mold a nigga got to go in. You know, any um, any participants in Ramadan or um, fellow Muslims, you understand. I said participants in Ramadan or fellow Muslims because I understand that not just Muslims participate in Ramadan. Yeah, there's a, there are a lot of individuals who are not Muslim Yes, they are not Muslim. They do not follow the faith of Islam, nor do they believe in Islam. However, they believe and understand and know the benefits of fasting during the month of Ramadan, and so they do it. You know, a lot of a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of bodybuilders fast during the month of Ramadan, and they are not Muslim. But anyway, yeah, I was I was debating about if I was gonna pull up on on, on the bitch. You know, so I said, "Fuck, it, I'm gonna pull up on the bitch." The bitch was at the Econa Lodge, right? So off the, off the rip, now I already told the bitch, hey, look, ain't no fucking going on. Like, I already let her know that. Ain't no fucking going on. Ain't no motherfucking fucking going on. Yeah, I had already let her know that. But uh, I'm like, man, let me just pull up and just see what the bitch talking about. You know what I mean? But the bitch was at the Econa Lodge. So once I knew she was at the Econa Lodge, <laughs> I definitely knew I wasn't fit to fuck the bitch. Like the Econa Lodge, bitch, I would be embarrassed. This is shit I'd be talking about. These unrealistic standards. As a man, me meeting a new woman, inviting her to pull up at a hotel, I would be embarrassed to bring her to the Econa Lodge. Yeah, I would be embarrassed. I wouldn't even do it. If I was standing in the Econa Lodge, 
I wouldn't even bring a bitch there, not no new bitch. Hell, motherfucking no. But anyway, I pull up on the bitch real quick. You know, I gave her a little hug. I squeezed the ass a little bit. I might even gave a little, a little pet, you know? And, um, you know, I got up out of there. Hold up. My dog here, my brother here, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put together this, uh, put together this table for me because I ain't good at that shit. What's up, my nigga? We live on YouTube. Come on. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I ain't good at putting shit together like that, but, you know, I'm good at some other shit. I'm good at putting shit together, but I ain't good at putting shit together. You dig it? Yeah, I'm good at putting shit together, but I ain't good at putting shit together. <laughs> so anyway, um, the bitch, you know, I, I was talking to the bitch. I'm like, this bitch got some potential. The bitch had a lot of potential. She did. But the bitch was like 30-something, no kids, and fine, but the bitch ain't getting no money. So what that tells me in my mind is this bitch got to be a slut. You got to be a slut, bitch. A slut. And I don't like sluts. Yeah, I do not like sluts. I don't got no sympathy, no respect for a slut. What Future said, yeah, I ain't got no, I ain't got no respect for a slut, bitch. I love a hoe. Oh, I love a hoe, bitch. I love a bitch that's a hoe. You heard me? I love a bitch that's a hoe. I, I'll give her anything, a bitch that's a hoe, a real hoe. But a slut? Hell no. I ain't got shit for a motherfucking slut. But this is what I had in my mind. And... You know, making judgments. Yes. And you got to judge people. I think you got to. You know, you just try not to judge them according to your own way with standards. But you got to judge people. You see my last Instagram post, you will understand more. Anyway, but I'm like, no, nah, let me get a bitch a chance. Let me get a bitch a chance. Let me see where it's going. Man, my nigga. Uh... I was at this uh, down a couple, like about a couple weeks in the Ramadan, a week, about a week or so in the Ramadan. Actually, it was this last weekend. I pull up at the uh, down for low uh, celebrity basketball game for Shoulder Low. You know what I'm saying? Holler that Shoulder Low Jr. Shout out to Shoulder Low Jr., man. Rest in peace, uh, Shoulder Low. Uh, that was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful event, by the way, too. Uh, shout out to Erica, my store. Like, that was a beautiful, beautiful event. But, um, Shorty happened to call me. And she was sending, I got on her ass about like all the shit like she need to get done if she want to fuck with me. Like I told the bitch, you got to get you some money and no motherfucking plain language. And no unplain language, should I say. And uh, yeah, you good, nigga. You good. You ain't got to be. Don't worry. You straight. <laughs> My nigga Mark. Anyway. Oh, yeah. One of the best movers ever. I'm gonna plug you. I'm gonna plug. I'm gonna plug the business, Mark. You heard me? I'm a matter of fact. Go ahead and plug it now, dog. Come on, plug it now. Tell them. Tell them where. They, tell them where can they get you at? Give me your information. Where, where can they find you? Four four six zero six eight eight zero three. Give it to them one more time. Four four six zero six eight eight zero three. All right. Yeah. Anywhere in the Atlanta area, surrounding areas, my nigga got you. Like, yeah, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Anyway, um, so back to where I. I Damn, I got I got uh, sidetracked. Excuse me, forgive me. I'm getting excited. Yeah, so I pulled up on the bitch again, like right after I left the show to low basketball game, because I was just by another bitch. And so I pulled up on the bitch. I took a couple pictures with her. You know what I mean? All right, I met her in the lobby, gave her a hug. I actually happened to see while I was in the lobby or right outside the lobby the hotel. It was a much nicer hotel this time. The bitch got the memo. Um. Well, I was outside the library hotel, and this is all during Ramadan, you know, so I'm still fasting. I ain't, you know, I ain't fucking nothing. Plus, you know, a bitch ain't showed me she got anything going on to be worth fucking with me anyway. Um, I pull up on her. I leave. We took a few, pet, a few, a few pictures, but while I was with her, it was a nigga outside in the parking lot of the, um, of the hotel lobby. He stopped me. He like, hey, my nigga, don't I know you? Hold up, nigga. No, I know you. No, nah, nigga, I know you. Hey, I ain't trying to be disrespectful, bro, but I know you. You be on Instagram fucking with them big bitches. Yeah, nigga, that's what's up. <laughs> hey, that shit was so... I, that shit meant so much to me. You know what I mean? That shit meant so much to me. That's only happened... That was my second time that ever happened to me. Yeah, that was my second time that ever happened to me. Like somebody uh, recognizing me, especially a man. No, I think I've had women recognize me before, but... Only twice has a man ever stopped me, recognized me, and, like, gave me my flowers. The first time it happened was, what, about 
six months back, seven months back at a uh, swim pit, Cancun. Yeah, I was chilling with some, um, like it was the first night of swim pit, Cancun. I went there because um, I didn't want to go to the one in Houston because I know you, a lot of, you know, a lot of niggas I don't really rock with was going to be there. And um, not that I was ducking anything. I just I just wanted to really be able to enjoy myself. And I wanted to be able to really flex. And I knew most niggas wasn't going to go to Cancun because they ain't got passports and shit like that. So I took advantage, as a player should. You dig what I'm saying? Pop my motherfucking collar. <laughs> anyway, so I was in um, Cancun, swim thick, first night. It was these bitches from Philly. You know, I'm in the cup smoking me one. The bitches from Philly, they started talking to me. They wasn't really my type physically. But like I told y'all, I'm a jail nigga and I'm a real player. So I'm never going to like, if a woman try to talk to me, I'm always going to flirt with her, flirt back, engage her, even if I know I'm not interested in her at all. Because to me, that's good manners in my mind. Anyway, <laughs> they asking me questions like, yeah, who is you? You know, what you do? What you got going on? You know what I'm saying? Woo -woo -woo. Just, you know, and I'm I'm downplaying shit. You know, I had on a lot of jewelry and shit. Uh, I'm downplaying shit. Though. I'm like, you know, I ain't nobody, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I ain't shit, for real. <laughs> I think that's what I said verbatim. And um, so, like, they looking at me like I'm being an asshole or something. But I'm not. I'm just, you know, I'm just fucking with them. I'm being funny. And, uh, like, they start talking shit. You know, a little shit amongst themselves, like, oh, girl, this nigga this or this nigga that. And as they start talking shit, as they start, like, this, I couldn't even plan this shit. As they start talking shit, a nigga ran from the opposite side of the venue. Like, we outside at the hotel, the big resort. A nigga ran from the opposite side, like, and started calling my name. I thought it was a nigga I had beef with or something. Like, a nigga, I done talked a lot of shit on the internet like, I thought it was a nigga that had it out for me or something. So I'm bracing myself, like, oh, shit, I'm finna have to fight this nigga, you know? The nigga run through the crowd. Hey, Stefan, Stefan, Lorenzo, is that you? <laughs> the nigga ran up right in front of the bitches, act like the bitches wasn't even there. And he like, yo, dog, nigga, I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan, nigga. Like, yo, nigga, you do your motherfucking thing, nigga. Like, nigga, and hey, you the same way you is online. You the same way in person. Like, I fuck with you, nigga, for real, for real. Nigga, keep that shit up. And I'm like, all right, my nigga, that's what's up. I'll dap him up and shit. I'm like, bro, let's, let's flick it up. And the nigga, no lie. If I'm lying, I'm flying. Well, all he, like, right there in front of the bitches. He like, dog, I ain't even on your level, my nigga. I can't even take no picture with you. I ain't even, no, no, no. Like, I got work to do. Don't even, don't even worry about me. Like, no, I'm, I'm going to get there eventually. But no, my nigga, I ain't, I ain't even worthy. You know? <laughs> and the bitches just had their jaws dropped, like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is this nigga? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> so yeah, that was that was very dear to me. Anyway, um, damn, this was supposed to be a quick video. I'd have been on this bitch 30, 33 minutes. Um, this shit is effortless, right? I could get it off whenever the fuck I want. But one thing you niggas gotta know, these bitches, especially, it ain't just Atlanta, it's all over. It's not just Atlanta. I'm kidding. It's just Atlanta. it's not Atlanta. It's all over. These bitches, the young ones as well as the old ones, because of social media, they have an unrealistic, you know what I mean? They're very unrealistic about, you know what I mean, their uh desires in a man, the expectations from a man. And all the shit they desiring, as Kevin Samuel said, basically all the shit he was saying, all the shit these women be desiring and expecting, they don't possess none of it. You want a nigga with some money, but you ain't got two pennies to rub together. You want a nigga with a Maybach, but you ain't even got a car. You want a nigga with some designer, bitch, you ain't never been in no Louis store and bought yourself shit. I'm not buying a bitch no designer. The only way I'm buying a bitch designer is if when I met her, that's what she was rocking. Bitch, if when I met you, you was already going up in the Louis store, already going in the Gucci store, already going in the Chanel store, doing your motherfucking thing. Yeah, bitch, because you done already set the standard. So I can't come to you same thing over here, bitch. I done already set the standard, bitch. I was on when I met you, bitch. Oh, the one um big booty bitch from the verses. I ain't going to tell you which one. Yeah, I blocked that bitch. I blocked that bitch. I blocked that bitch quick. I blocked, you know why I blocked the bitch? Because she called me and asked me why I ain't post her picture. I posted another bitch, didn't post her. I said, bitch, because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like the way the pictures look. You know how like, you take selfies with somebody? 
and then like you just taking them real quick, and then you go back and look, you like, damn, I don't even like how these motherfuckers look. Okay, Jocelyn Brown. Yeah, baby, I'm gonna speak. Peace to you, peace to you, Queen. But um, yeah, yeah, I blocked that bitch. I blocked her from Instagram, I blocked her from motherfucking my phone. Yeah, you all oh, you bitches ain't finna just have access to me. The fuck, bitch? The fuck out of here. Cause half you bitches, when it comes to you big bitch, when it comes to you, I love y'all. I love you big bitches. I love you BBWs. I love all y'all, baby. I swear to God, I love you. I love you, right? But let's face it. Most of you bitches deal with simp-ass niggas. Like, if you got a nigga you've been dealing with, he a simp-ass nigga. Especially if you calling yourself an influence or whatever, and you with all the shenanigans online like I am. Your nigga's a simp-ass nigga nine times out of ten. And you know, when you come fucking with a real nigga, or a fly nigga, a nigga that's governed by a spirit of flyness, that you know what it is. Niggas, niggas fucking you and getting on, bitch. Niggas not doing nothing for you hoes. Niggas not, no, nah, no. Nah. Niggas is really out here having their way. Niggas not doing shit for you bitches. Niggas ain't doing nothing but dropping dick in you hoes. And that's not me. That ain't what I do. When I preside over a bitch, when I really preside over a bitch, and she really, you know what I mean, really, really following my instructions, no, I do my best to make sure I make her life easy. And speaking of, I said something about the best dick sucker. A bitch, you got to be sucking some dick. Because the bitch, uh, my one bitch, you know what I mean? My one bitch. <laughs> my one bitch. I'm going to say her name. My one bitch, Shantae. Shantae be sucking some dick. And shit, Susan old ass be sucking some dick. So, bitch, you talking about you got some... Bitch, you better be sucking some dick, dick. You talking about you want to impress me. Bitch, what y'all bitches don't understand is I threw dick from motherfucking all around this fucking country to halfway around the fucking continent. Continent, bitch. Bitch, I done threw dick in Africa. I done threw dick in Asia. Well, really, it was instable, but Turkey, like one side of Turkey, you're in Asia. The other side, you're in um, <laughs> you're in Europe. I done threw dick in Europe. Like, it, it's different with me. So a lot of that shit, it just don't, it just don't impress me. It don't impress me. You know what impresses me? You know what makes a bitch sexy to me? You know what makes a bitch fucking irresistible to me? When she getting some motherfucking money and she being a lady with it. I repeat, for me, what makes a bitch irresistible is when she getting some motherfucking money and she being a lady with it. I don't give a fuck what you doing. I don't give a fuck what you doing. But you getting some money and you being a lady, that shit is irresistible to me. Why do y'all think, and when the show come out, hopefully y'all see this shit, with the reality show I had that I filmed two years ago, that still ain't out yet, inshallah, it's gonna come out. The bitch that I chose on the show initially, the bitch Tiffany, okay? I chose Tiffany because I'm looking from the viewership standpoint. I know people don't think that I'm attracted to dark-skinned ladies or larger BBWs, right? But I definitely am. But what made Tiffany so attractive to me on that show, what made her just irresistible to me on that show was when, when I knew that she was getting the most money in real life out of any of them bitches. Yeah, yeah, but the reason why I couldn't deal with Tiffany in real life, because she wanted to, like, I'm not going to be with no bitch that's popping this shit by she getting money, she getting money, she getting money, and the bitch ain't doing nothing for me. What the fuck? Bitch, that's just like a bitch. That's just like a woman. You ladies out there, that's like you being with a nigga that's a millionaire, right? But he don't do shit for you. You can't call that nigga and get nothing. Like, where, where's the fun in that? Who the fuck? Where they do that at? Can you dig what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. And again, y'all coming up in here. Hit that motherfucking like button. So we, I ain't asking for no money. I ain't got my motherfucking... I'm finna put my cash up on it. That's what's finna start going on. On my Zelle. Uh, I'm gonna put my Zelle up here. Um, I'm not even asking for super chats. All I'm asking you to do is take your motherfucking lazy ass and hit the motherfucking like button. That's it. That's it. Like button's innocent. Said it a million times, and I'm going to say it a million more, because human beings are fucking forgetful, and they must be reminded. Yeah. And after Ramadan, I'm really going to go hard on you bitch-made-ass niggas. 
you it's way more you bitch made ass niggas, but y'all learning though. A lot of you bitch made ass niggas is learning. And I'm talking about when it comes to dealing with these women, man. Like for real. So stop lying. Start being honest about what your intentions are. If you just want to fuck her, tell her, hey, baby, I just want to fuck you. You know what I'm saying? If you a player like me and you don't fuck with broke bitches, make sure she know that. Off the rip. Hey, baby, look, I like you. You fine in a motherfucker. You sexy. Oh, all that shit. But after we bust these big ass nuts, bills still going to be due. And I, I, I got too much value within myself. I'm not going to fuck on you and you don't bring nothing to the table. You heard me? Not even for one time. Rest in peace, Kevin Sanders. When God creates, he makes no mistakes. Big is beautiful, too. Um, everybody who watched this video, this is just entertainment. That's it. I ain't shit. I don't know nothing. You know what I mean? Um, you see me. I, I ain't got on no jewelry. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know shit. I ain't got a fresh haircut. You know, I ain't rocking no designer. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't got nothing going on. But yeah, though, I hope, uh, I hope the universe brings you everything that you want and then some. When God creates, he makes no mistakes. Big is beautiful, too. I thought you knew.